Well, sisters, we send you loving greetings for a joyous and gentle holiday season, holy day season. That's what the word holiday really comes from, holy days. Sometimes we don't remember that. And here we are in the dark time of the year with its short days and long nights. And for us, it's all about rest and renewal and peace and quiet. This is the time of year that Mother Nature is encouraging us with all her messages to reduce what obligations we can, what commitments we can, to work less, to do less for others. Ah, <gasps> shocking to take better care of ourselves, make more time for ourselves and our loved ones, stay off screens and devices, and in general, to just be more quiet, low-key, and slow. Because they lived closer to nature, our ancestresses were much more in tune with Mother Nature, with her, and we women of old gathered our families around the fireplace, telling stories of days gone by, telling our family history tales. We taught our daughters and sons alike useful and beautiful handcrafts to make. By candlelight, we played gentle games. We preserved food. We ate a little less, and very simply, we read good books, we wrote in our journals our deep musings, we went to bed early, we dreamed intentionally, we slept long, we soaked up the magical power of the darkness. After the hard work of the three foregoing seasons, the New Year's spring planting and the bright summer growing period, and then the intensity of the autumn harvesting, we knew in our bones that it was right and natural that there be one season at least where we could claim our, you might call it our divine birthright of rest. But in its desperate effort to control life, the dominator model mindset, which uh, we also call the uh, patriarchal paradigm, uh, the unfortunate paradigm we all now live under, this paradigm is arrogant and ignorant at the same time. And it does its best to refuse Mother Nature's reality. And it attempts to reverse every one of her wisdoms. Most of us, quite unwittingly, fall prey to the daily pressure, the pushing of this insane culture that convinces us to be even busier than usual in what would naturally be the season of slowing down. We work harder. Oh, all those gifts to get and all those parties and dinners to both attend and to give. We stay up later. We indulge far too much in food and drink. We allow far too much noise and activity, which <clears throat> by the new year, <laughs> we're exhausted. And I don't know about you, but for me, year after year in the past, I found that another year had passed and in it, I did not have one single season of true rest. And come January, we're expected to start it all up again. <laughs> oh my goddess. For the patriarchal system to function, it depends almost entirely on an unending supply of compliant female energy. So be assured, <laughs> Patriarchy will never, ever, ever willingly give us the rest that we need. We must claim it. In ancient times, it was always the wise woman, the queen, who led civilization in living wisely, in deliberately using 
the dark time for rest and renewal. It is time for us now, sisters, to be queens again, leading our families and society in claiming our much needed season of rest for the year. For us, this season and the coming winter solstice is not so much about the birth of the sun or sun, but rather the conception at solstice of the soon to be warming, the increasing light of the sun. And what you could think of as the intimate engagement that, that ancient peoples thought of all the time, because they were constantly building monuments to the equinoxes, to the solstices, to, to they were constantly going to a great deal of trouble to build these huge monuments that would mark exactly when the summer sun would rise or um, when the winter e solstice would, would come about. So you could think of it, uh, and we've forgotten this as, as modern peoples, we've really forgotten uh, so much about that. And so you could think of it as this really intimate connection and engagement that our beautiful blue-green Mother Earth has with the dark heavens all around her. Solstice comes from, most of you probably know this, solstice comes from the word sol, the Latin word for sun, combined with the word stit, S-T-I-T, which means stand, as in standing still. The Latin term was solstitium, and Middle English speakers by the 13th century shortened it to solstice. So winter solstice means sun stands still. The sun is at rest for a short time before beginning her journey back to the light, and so should we be. Winter solstice for us is when metaphorically, at least, the sun is not born, but rather conceived anew. Nothing is born suddenly out of nowhere to speak and act this way. The sun is born, you know, like all of a sudden erases both the magical power and the hard work of the mother. Obviously before birth, there must be conception and then a rather long period of gestation. So the life-giving sun is conceived at winter solstice and now slowly but surely and still very much in the dark remember she gestates beginning her journey of growth into increasing light eventually yes to be born in the spring i first learned this concept from the wonderful women's teacher ruth barrett thank you very much ruth so just as a seed lies secretly beneath the earth in the deep dark soil. Uh, the word soil, the root word of which means seat or to sit. That's what soil comes from, to sit. Just so all new life is conceived in the dark and requires time to gestate in that quiet, safe, peaceful, dark chalice of the cosmic womb, you might say. This great womb is mirrored here on earth by the womb of woman, who is the mother to humanity and who brings forth all new human life. All life goes in cycles, we all know this, and winter is when the wheel turns to the season of secret renewal and rejuvenation in the soil, the seat of the dark time. We women are the natural queens, the rightful leaders of civilization and when civilization is in a mess as ours <laughs> clearly is at this moment it means that women are not doing the job for which we were made to lead humanity to goodness so once again know this the entrenched male-centric androcratic culture in which we live will never give women power to lead no, it has to be claimed. It has to be claimed calmly. It has to be claimed confidently. It has to be claimed courageously. And what, what is at stake? Well, literally nothing less than the future of the human race. 
Saturnalia was the Roman festival of this time of year, and one of its interesting expressions was that the societal construct of slave owners and slaves, who are rightfully called enslaved persons, was reversed, turned upside down temporarily for a few days. Slaves were allowed to order their masters around, Slaves were allowed to eat at the master's table, the master's food. Slaves were allowed to wear the master's clothes and all that sort of thing. But interestingly, this served only to reinforce the fact that the slaves were slaves and the owners were their masters because the, because the masters allowed the festival to take place and took back their power when it was over and you know they never really gave up their power in the first place the festival was instituted by the masters themselves as a way to allow the perpetually abused slaves to let off steam but do it in a way that was safe for the lords in in a manner that would not actually endanger or change the masters existing paradigm when the festival was over the slaves always went back to being slaves and really they never were anything else. And the masters always went back to lording it over them and stealing their energy, which is actually what slavery is all about. Slavery is the theft by one of the energy of another. And I first learned this from women's teacher Z Budapest. So thank you, Z. So, we women can certainly celebrate the fact that more of us are now leading in the world, but I think we have to pay attention and look at the fact that this might be some sort of modern day Saturnalia for us women, that the average men who currently lead the world, who have thought of themselves as masters, of the universe for some 6,000 years, let's be sure that they're not just throwing us some kind of sop so they can smile and tell us how equal everything now is. While they continue stealing the average woman's energy in so many other ways across the globe every day, in so many ways. Only when the significant majority of leaders in the world are women guiding all spheres of life, will we truly have changed anything for civilization? It has always been right and natural that women lead humanity and patriarchy arose some oh, six, 7,000 years ago, many people think. And so in spite of 6,000 years of male-centric brainwashing that we were less than, you can feel in your heart the truth of that statement that it has always been right and natural that women lead humanity. And the societies of peace that matriarchal culture scholar Heidi Gettner Abendroth writes about prove that once we did. Thank you, Heidi, for your work. But we may well ask ourselves, how will women lead civilization again? Well, we have to start with our own selves, our own lives. We must begin by gathering our own personal power individually. And then we may gently and firmly guide our menfolk and our families with our values of compassion and shared good and justice for all, all implemented with very healthy boundaries. The power gathering season is winter. So we must start now at least in this hemisphere. So some practical suggestions. What could this look like for us, this gathering of power? What could this look like for us as individual women? Well, it might mean, for one thing, early to bed, getting to bed early by 10 o'clock at the very latest and getting up without an alarm clock. Many of us stay up far too late, often on our devices, which science has absolutely proved beyond a shadow of a doubt, using your devices within two hours of bedtime is damaging long-term to your natural ability to fall asleep easily. 
the work should stop at sunset. The evening should be screen free, work free, Facebook free, Snapchat free, Instagram free, and I understand TikTok free as well, whatever the hell that is. I don't know what TikTok is. I'm 64 years old. I don't know from TikTok, but if TikTok is a thing, TikTok free also. Another idea is make this the period of time to do less for others. And this is almost anathema to many women. Do less for others? Can't do that. I'm a good person. Yeah, you are. And you need now to do less for others. We women are always so ready to give to others, to help others. This is the time to make fewer promises to give your energy and your time and your work to others who need you. The needs of others will never end, I assure you. So it is up to each of us to hold our own boundaries or lose our damn minds. And then later on, as you grow older, probably your physical health as well. I see it all the time. Women who are really strong through their 20s and 30s and give, 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 implementing their over a giving mother archetype for decades, something happens when they turn 50 and 60. The body starts to break down because they have not made time for themselves. They have not rested every year for a significant period of time. So if you're in your 20s and 30s and you think you can give endlessly, you check in with a woman in her 60s and you ask how her body is feeling. Unless she has taken care of herself, she's going to be complaining to you about her knees going, being slightly overweight and out of shape, um, diabetes, some kind of heart trouble worry, um, all of that starts happening in the 60s. Another suggestion might be to use this time to spend more time on oneself, on your own interests, on your own self-care, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I think we all know pretty much what it means to take care of ourselves physically, whether we actually do it or not. We know what it means. But what about the other aspects? Self-care mentally means working less, letting go of trying to figure everything out for just a bit. You can go back to it later if you need to. But, you know, we all know that worrying does not help us figure out life. It's never helped me figure out life. And by the way, stop making those lists of pros and cons on each decision because that is never the best way to make any decision. That's never the best way. So give yourself a respite and trust that the refreshment that you will be gathering for yourself, that you will be allowing for yourself, will definitely bring you new inspiration and ideas that you will be able to use when you come out of the dark time that will help you live well. Trust that because that is the truth. Out of renewal and rest in the dark comes all sorts of wonderful new ideas that you never would have thought of before. Self-care emotionally means actually letting other people figure out and run their own lives without your opinion, your support, your input, your feedback, your help that you think they so very much need. They probably do need it, but let that go for now. Let that go. This is the time to concentrate on yourself. It means staying away from people who bring you no joy. And it means facing and walking towards people and places and things that you love and turning your back on what you don't. Self-care spiritually means making some time and space in your life to feel that awe again in the majesty and the magic of life and know that you yourself are that, the magic and the majesty, that's you. Another suggestion is to pare down and simplify. We've heard this a million times, but do we actually do it? If you are always the one to host the big parties and the big, huge family meals, 
perhaps have somebody else do it this year. And you know what? If you can't quite get there, if it has to be you, then consider scaling down to something beautifully simple instead of the usual multi-course, mini-dish, gigantic family holiday meal that <laughs> leaves everyone overstuffed and sleepy with, by the way, three quarters of the family sacked out in front of the big screen TV afterwards while one or two people, you know it's true, let's face it, those one or two people, almost always the vagina owners, are slaving away in the kitchen, cleaning up. <laughs> what if you just made a delicious one pot stew with a lovely artisanal bread accompanied by a decent wine. It's so much easier. But be sure to tell them in advance that anyone complaining that there isn't a big multi-course meal will be in charge of the next party alone. And that'll shut them up, we hope. Oh, and here's Ava's hostess tip number 32. Always refer to any bread that you serve at your table as artisanal. No one really has any idea, unless it's Wonder Bread, then they'll know. But no, it'll be the wiser, and they will all appreciate how discerning you are. Artisanal bread. It's a key. Another suggestion is to reduce your screen time. Far less TV watching, far less use of the smartphone and computer, far less time on social media, fewer emails. In fact, you might do what I do occasionally to give myself a break, not just in the dark time of the year, but any time. I take the every other day approach. One day I check my devices, the next day, not at all. Not one time, not once during the whole day. I am not 911 for the world. The world will keep turning without me. <laughs> no, really. So do you find that you have a hard time not looking? Then just admit that you're addicted. No shame in that, many of us are. The dark season is a wonderful time to release addictions and let go of habits that harm you and bring you no joy. Does Facebook bring you joy? Admit it. No, it doesn't. It's useful. I use Facebook. It brings me news that I might not otherwise have learned. So it has its uses. But does it bring me joy? Almost never. So just say it. Facebook does not bring me joy. That's the truth. By the way, you heard it here first. You may quote me at will, with credit. Oh, and Mark Zuckerberg is a robot alien. No, really. Another suggestion is the classic self-care routines of long hot baths by candlelight, lots more walks on the beach with the dog bundled up, soaking up Yemayas, oceanic ions going out at night under the stars. You know, our ancestresses lived looking at the moon and stars, feeling the great mystery of life. And now, day or night, we barely even look at the sky. So instead of watching another overamped action movie made by men, drive a bit away from the big city and find a place with much less light pollution and just gaze at the great goddess vault of heaven, this infinite inky black, the, as they say, the void, which is not empty with the stars blinking and twinkling at you and feel the awe in life, in the mystery of life that you have not felt in years. Hey, there's no tickets to buy, no Fandango, just go. Never underestimate the importance of awe in one's life. And finally, teaching others. That is our job as women, explaining this wisdom of going into the dark to our friends and to our families, sharing your ideas for resting in the dark and asking your women friends for their ideas so that you can add them to yours. We women are the authors of life. That's where we get the word authority. We women are the authors of life, the ancient natural spiritual authority for life. And I learned this first from great woman's teacher, uh, Vajra Ma. So thank you, Vajra. We are the ones who are supposed to teach our families this ancient women's wisdom of resting in the dark. So shirketh not your queenly duty. Without the wisdom of women, 
life goes to hell in the proverbial handbasket. Average men cannot save us now. If they could have, they would have. They, they are actually the ones who sold us the overpriced designer handbasket that we were going to hell in in the first place. And quite a few of us, myself included, were for many years dumb enough to uh, buy the matching high heels. So I say Jimmy Choo can go to hell in his own damn high heels. It is high time to let go of these absurd female beauty torture devices and free our energy to do what is needed now, what average men are incapable of doing. And that is lovingly, compassionately, showing by example how we may all live well, how we may all live life as it was always meant to be. So send your ideas in for how you are going to claim your rest in the dark. But send them in by December 24th because after that, the Museum of Woman, the Goddess Temple, I personally will be unavailable and unreachable between December 25th and January 31st. So we won't be responding to any emails, texts, private messages on Facebook or Instagram, no messages of any kind during this period. And by the way, I will not make the slightest effort to discover what TikTok might be, because I take my own advice. I will return February 1st, feeling rested, renewed, recharged, rejuvenated, ready to joyfully create something new with you all in 2020. Anything you need from me, message me by December 24th or hold your peace, not forever, just till February 1st. So with a sigh of relief, because <sighs> I'm feeling it, let's choose to drop into the dark, the time of the wise woman, the time that is now. Let's allow the natural rejuvenation and the female power of the dark to silently and gently rise within us over the next month or two, for who knows what may soon be birthed into the coming light. But for now, blessed be the sacred dark.